Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Today I'm building a PC for a good friend of mine. This one is a little bit different because usually I would pick all of the parts for a build like this, but she picked everything. <laughs> Keep going. Yep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the case, but this is going to be, I think, a two-part video because first we're gonna build it, get everything up and running, and then we're gonna customize it and do a little bit of case modding to make this little ASUS Prime AP201 a little bit customized. But before that, here's a word from today's video sponsor. You already know who it is. It's MSI, not ASUS. This video is brought to you by MSI and their new Radiax Tri-Band Wi-Fi gaming routers. Game and create on the latest 6 GHz band and enjoy interference-free Wi-Fi, capable of delivering up to 6600 megabits. Download, stream and game like never before. Reduce network latency and enjoy optimized traffic with AI QoS automation. MSI AI QoS works in real time so you can focus on work without worrying about having enough speed. MSI ensures maximum hardware reliability and network stability through the use of a premium heatsink, which works to keep the temperatures down and to keep you online. Equipped with a 1.8 GHz quad-core ARM processor, unleash the full support of Wi-Fi 6 features such as beamforming. Learn more about MSI's latest Radiax Tri-Band Gaming Routers via the links in the video description. As mentioned, I didn't pick any of the parts for this build, so let's go through some of them because I've kind of just glanced at whatever they dropped off. So we've got the ROG Strix B760G Gaming Wi-Fi D4. This is a DDR4 board. This is a good board if you've already got a system with DDR4 and you're looking to upgrade and you want to go to 13th gen or whatnot and potentially 14th gen, it's looking like it's going to be on the same socket. So this B760 board is going to be okay. Also, it's got some white and silver accents which are going to suit the case we're using. Now we're using the ASUS Prime AP201. We fully reviewed this case already. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. But if you saw our Computex coverage with the Antec booth, this case also looked pretty familiar. Yep. <laughs> For the CPU, I'm donating some of my personal stock. This is the Intel Core i5-13600K. It's going to be an absolute weapon for this PC because it's not supposed to be a super high-end gaming PC. It's just going to have a lot of storage and it'll play lots of games. To cool that 13600K, we're going with the ROG Ryu 3 360 ARGB liquid cooler. Again, I didn't pick any of these parts. You can see a bit of a theme going on here. They wanted everything to be ASUS and ROG just so it was all the same. I mean, it's fine. I would also probably do the same thing. This is a white cooler too, so it's gonna go with the aesthetic of everything. Which leads us into the next thing, the graphics card. This is the RTX 3060 Ti. I think the reason why she picked this is because it's white, I suppose, and it will go with the rest of the aesthetic for the whole build. This is one of the new ROG Loki SFXL power supplies. The reason why I kind of recommended that they would use this power supply or something in SFX size, mainly because when we reviewed the case, I found it to be more efficient to use an SFX power supply, even though it takes an ATX one. Yeah, just SFX works out better. You get a bit more clearance. Even though the GPU that we're using in this build isn't huge, it's just gonna make it easier if they wanted to upgrade at a later stage. And lastly, <laughs> this is what I thought was ridiculous, was they decided to go with two four terabyte NVMe M.2 drives. This is obscene for a machine like this, but I guess they want to store photos and videos and all that kind of stuff on their machine as well. I don't know what they're going to be using the PC for, probably gaming, but yeah, a lot of storage. And lastly, <laughs> again, pretty overkill, 64 gigs of Kingston Fury Beast DDR4 in white. So the whole white aesthetic is, I mean, that's what they wanted. I don't get to choose. I'm just putting the PC together because that's what good friends do. I like it. I like it. I think it's going to look pretty sick. The only thing that's going to be weird to me, if I'm being honest, is I think this power supply has got black cables, but maybe we can do something about that. Hmm. 
Maybe something to noodle on for a little bit. Let's get this ROG board out of the box. So we can take a look at what comes in the motherboard box. Sounds like I'm doing a motherboard overview, but we're not. not okay. An overview. Not an overview. We're gonna show you how to install a CPU if you've never seen it before. I'm gonna kind of speed run this just uh, so you guys can see how quickly you can do it if you want but we'll walk through a couple little bits here. What you wanna do is push the corner of this lever here down and to the side, and then that releases the retention system. And we can just lift up the top of the socket cover. You wanna drop in your CPU. Now, typically with Intel CPUs at the moment, this could change over time, but whichever way you look at the text on the board is the correct orientation, if that makes sense. And you wanna drop the CPU in the socket, Give it a little bit of a wiggle to make sure it's in there properly. Drop that cover back over the top. Now, what I would suggest doing is pushing down on this corner here to pop off the top of the socket cover and then reverse of opening, I suppose. So there you go, 13600K is now installed. All right, next up, we're going to install the RAM. And because we're using four modules here, we're gonna open up every slot. And the way you wanna open this is just use your thumb, push these clips down that opens up the socket. You wanna get your RAM modules and you wanna check the orientation here. And you can see that the RAM only goes in one way. It's RAM guys, not RAMs, okay? Just wanna make that clear. Get that in the comments quite a lot. Okay, and the way you wanna do this is once you've aligned it with that center peg, drop it into the slot and then use a thumb on each end of the module, push in and you'll hear it click into place. And then you'll want to rinse and repeat that over all the modules. Now, if you're having problems aligning the RAM, there is a way you can do this as well. You can put it on an angle like this and then line it up too. Right, that can, that's just a little tip that, you know, you pick up over building PCs over the years. And because I can't really see it, <laughs> there you go. That's it, now the RAM's installed. Wow, that RAM looks really good. What do you reckon, Claire? I like it, it's It looks nice. sick. I, I, I want some of this for myself. All right. M.2 insulation, this is the heatsink for the top slot because we're gonna be occupying both slots, we need to open them both up. But we'll start with the top one using my cool little screwdriver, not an LTT screwdriver. This one's from an iQnix case. I just kind of kept using it because it was really nice, right? So what we're going to do now is if we got this loose enough, we can drop the first M.2 drive in the slot. Now with all these new motherboards, you'll notice there's a clip that holds the M.2 drives into place. This makes it easy, we don't need to use screws anymore. So we'll just drop that Kingston drive in, push it down and push the clip so it locks into place. Now your drive's installed. We need to remove the cover on the thermal pad, otherwise you're gonna have really bad thermal interface in between the heatsink and the drive. So to do that, it's pretty simple. You just peel it away and here we go. Woo! That's it. Now we can align that heat sink back on top of the drive. I try to get one screw in a little bit and then I can kind of lift it up and align it. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Now we can screw both sides in. You want it to be relatively tight, but don't over tighten it. Otherwise you might not ever be able to undo it. Now that you've seen me do one, let's speed run the next one. Visit our mates over at Peel Corp for a quick peel. That's it. One thing I recommend doing at this stage of the PC build is getting your backplate ready if you're using a liquid cooler and doing it before you put the motherboard in the case because sometimes it can be very odd and awkward to install all of that stuff. So yeah, let's do backplate. Let's search for all the biddies that we need. All right, LGA 1700 standoffs. That looks right. <laughs> let's hope it's right. And the way you would do this, and this is kind of the way I usually recommend doing it, Let's see if we can get this in a one shot. Put the back plate down on a flat surface if the motherboard's out of the case. Line your motherboard up with the back plate, like so. And then just finger tighten the standoffs in. Right, so I'm glossing over this part because we've done a lot of cooler insulation videos and I'll link some in the description because all of the Acer Tech based coolers that we've done in the past use this same method. And I'll link to the NZXT one that we did recently because that has the same mounting solution as 
this cooler. I recommend always taking all the panels off the case first, just so you can get access, because you never know what's gonna happen when you're building a PC. So it's better to be sure and to be safe, just so everything is out of the way. We've reviewed this case, as mentioned, I've shown how to do all of this for this case already. I just noticed that the AP201 and this motherboard, most cases these days have a center peg to hold the board in, but the, the motherboard that we're using doesn't even have the hole drilled out for that. So we're gonna remove the center peg, and instead of me just removing it and not putting it there, I'm gonna move it to another spot. Most cases these days come with a tool to remove these standoffs. So we're just gonna remove the center peg and we'll remove the one in the top center. Put the center peg in the top spot just so the motherboard has some support because as you guys may or may not know, if you're new to the channel, I like building my PCs upright because it makes it easier to film. Now that we've done that, we can put the motherboard in and with a bit of luck, even though it's not in the center, you should still hold in place, right? So that's a bit better than it would be if there was no center peg. And instead of me putting the screw in the center peg hole, we'll put it in this corner here. I pre-routed all of these cables just to make it easier for filming, but we're just gonna plug in all of the front panel stuff to make sure you can turn your system on. You've got audio and everything. So that is the front panel connector there. That's for your lights and your switches. We've got the front panel audio cable, which will plug into a header usually on the bottom left of the board down here. We've got our front panel USB type A. This cable can be tricky sometimes, but I decided to just do a tight bend. And you, the thing is you can bend these pins on these. And lastly, the USB type C front panel connector. This is a nice flat cable as well. So we can make that one look kind of nice. We'll come back and tidy all this up as well. I'm glossing over a few things here just to speed up the process a little bit. I'm gonna install the power supply. I've already installed it on this bracket here and we're doing the fan facing inwards because of the way the power cable plugs into the power supply. Otherwise it will just be weird. So I'm gonna feed these cables through the cutout here. And for this case, I noticed that if we're doing a 360 mil rad at the top, we want to hook it onto the lowest position here. Just makes it easier for radiator clearance and for plugging in the power cable, which you probably can't see from that angle because it doesn't make sense. The great thing is we're not installing a long GPU, so it's not going to be very difficult to make the GPU fit. All right, time for the cooler installation. I've already pre-routed a bunch of the cables for the cooler, so I didn't have to do that later. This one is a little bit different to a typical 360 mil liquid cooler at the top because the tubes come down this side because it won't fit any other way. I've also cable managed the cables on the fans too to make it a little bit easier. Let's see if all of my hard work actually works. Then we're swinging it around with a little bit of luck. Yep, okay. We're in. And <laughs> that one kind of rests there and we'll just whiz it up, that's it. This pump top has pre-applied thermal paste on it, which makes it a lot easier to install because you don't need to do any thermal paste application. One thing I would recommend doing when you're installing liquid coolers, and this one can, is a bit up to debate, I suppose, but what you can do here is I usually run the cables underneath there, just to make it a bit cleaner for cable management. And because this is a PC for someone else, I want it to look as clean as possible. So hopefully this method works. If not, we're gonna be reapplying them based. Moment of truth time, here we go. I'm not doing these up all the way because I want everything to line up nicely first and then we'll whiz them up all the way. The reason why I'm having the pipes come out on the RAM side as well is because if it's down the bottom, these pipes are gonna hit the rear fan. I need to do a couple adjustments for this not to hit the fan, but yeah, it just makes the, the run a bit longer, which helps it not hit stuff. All right, we're all whizzed up. I've decided to pull the AIO tubes out this way and it pulls it away from the rear fan so nothing touches. But let's get this GPU installed. This is such a tiny little baby card. It's so cute, it's probably got stickers all over it. All right, this one is very easy. There's no clearance issues. That's it. 
I'm going to run the power cable uh, over the back of the card because we've got black power cables. If I run them over the back of the card, I can kind of hide them like that. So you might not see them that much. White cables would have been good for this, but we're just going to stick with what we've got for now. We might change them later, but for now, yeah, we want to see if the system works. Let's, uh, let me search for these power cables. These ones are cool because what they've done with the Thor power supply I noticed is they've used the 12 volt high power connector on the power supply side. And then they have two of these PCIe power cables that come out of it. What that means is there's two separate 12 volt rails from that single connector. It makes it a lot cleaner. So the idea I had was kind of, I will tie them all up so it's nice and clean. And then we'll run it like, see if we can run it along the back edge of the card. But you see like the, the problem is we're gonna have to make all of that look really clean. I think we'll just use a cable tie. Maybe we should power it up and test it before we button it all up or we should just YOLO it, right? It's gonna work, it's gonna work, right? It's gonna work. Are you, are you, do you think it's gonna work, Claire? Yeah. I think it's gonna work. So let's, let's just yellow it and clean it all up. I'll show you the cable management once it's done and explain how I did it rather than showing you it while I'm doing it because that could take forever. So I'll see you in a second because time travel. Time jump to the future, all the cable management's done. It's an okay cable management job. It will get the job done. I've routed all the EPS cables kind of this way to tuck them up a little and hide them away. The way you'd usually want to do your cable management is the trick is put all the small cables on the bottom and all the thick cables on the top and it pushes everything down. One thing I know people are going to comment me like, oh, it's not the best cable management job in the world. The reason why it looks like this is I kind of ran all the cables. So you couldn't see any of them on the other side when you're looking into the PC. So it has to look like this on the back. This one runs up this way because if it sits in that groove there, you can't put the side panel on. And if we rotate it like that, you can see that this one cable sticks out. But when we put the side panel on, it goes on and no bulge. So cable management is complete. The build is complete. We'll put the panels on and then we'll see if this thing fires up. I completely yoloed this whole thing. Crush your fingers that it posts. All right, ladies and gents, moment of truth. Does it work? I think it's a bit of a spoiler already because the stuff is lighting up. So that's a good sign. Power's up. Are we going to post? I don't know. I haven't tested this yet. Uh, it's always a very anxious feeling when you've just built a new PC to see whether or not it's going to post. <sighs> oh, it's making the sound like it's going to post. Yes! Okay, cool. We're up. We're up and running, ladies and gents. It's always a good thing. Okay, with all that said, we're going to save the rest of this for part two where we're going to customize the rest of the case. I'll put a PC part pick list down below if you guys want to know what all the hardware is that we use in this build. Let us know if you enjoy these type of builds where you come along and build with me. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there down below. Please subscribe. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers, building PCs for his friend again. You peek, we seek. I'm so glad this thing posted. I did not test any of the hardware and that's a big no-no with PC building. You should definitely attempt to test hardware before getting into building, but I was confident enough and didn't make me look like an idiot. Thanks for watching. Ah, there's a Winja. There's a Winja behind the camera. Oh, sore elbow. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one, right? That's so nice. It is nice. I have a Elbow. She has a sore elbow, has a sore elbow from doing all the skateboarding tricks. This is Claire's a skateboarder doing kick flips. <laughs> Dude, I can't laugh. You can. Oh man, 
you can do it. You can do it. You can do all the kick, kick flips. <laughs> I'm not even wearing skate shoes. Look at my dad 9000s. <laughs> hey, hey, New Balance fam. Hey, New Balance, hook it up. Hook it up.